There we are out and about again, still warming up for short sleeve shirts. One of the horrors of the modern era is sail power. The women's right to shave movement, where women uh, believe that they're equal to men. They're just female blokes or female guys, as Americans would say. That they are the same and equal. And what's more, they will constantly question their husband. They've got the whoring pill now. They can go off out there and enjoy themselves with whoever they fancy without any fear of getting uh, pregnant, although sexually transmitted diseases are very much on the rise now. And indeed, we see unbridled lust a la Sodom and Gomorrah everywhere, don't we? Largely because of government allowing that kind of thing and also promoting a woman's right to kill, of course. Where if she does actually get pregnant, she can always murder her little one in cold blood uh, because the child is inconvenient to her. There's little more wicked than a woman, I'm afraid. However, for us, the Lord's people, what the women outside the Lord's people get up to is nothing to do with us. What the wicked women do is only going to end down the lake of fire anyway, so what does it matter really to us? They are not our people. But there's been an invasion of Christian circles in recent years. 25 years ago when I was saved, it wasn't so. But if you look at modern church settings and you can see them on the internet or youth culture type things, uh, events like Soul Survivor in the UK, which is a youth conference, you can see that everything has gone absolutely pear-shaped. All over the place we see wicked women setting themselves up telling absolutely shocking lies. There's Patricia King. There's, uh, what's her name, Heidi Baker. Uh, there is uh, Joyce Mayer. And there's one in the UK here, not so well known, Marion Daniels. Wicked rebels against God. They, sell, they tell the most evil and shocking lies known to mankind without any shame or conviction at all. That tells you immediately they don't have the Holy Spirit of God because you can't be filled with the Holy Spirit of God and tell shocking lies. Sorry. He is the Spirit of Truth. And if the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, dwells in someone, you cannot tell lies. You can't. The wicked women, I heard one of them, Heidi Baker, say that she was called of the Lord to do a work uh, of God. That was not the Lord God of Israel. That was a deceiving religious spirit, if she heard anything at all. Because God does not, in any event, put women in authority over men, ever. Take a look in Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12. You read the whole chapter right the way through because it sets the scene. It's a time when Israel had gone completely up the creek. Everything was all over the place and everything was an absolute mess. Chapter 3, verse 12 says, And chill, O my people, they that lead thee, cause thee, cause thee to err. He says, Children are your oppressors, and women rule over you. That's children being youth, anyone up to the age of majority, which is 20 in Scripture. And youth culture. We all know about youth culture, don't we? Youth cult, culture and youth should never be used as two, words, as two words in the same sentence, sorry. 
But these wicked women are telling the most evil and appalling lies. Barefaced. The Lord God of Israel does not put women in authority over men. And that's why you will never hear Jesus speak to you through any one of them. They're not ministers of God. This is what a minister of God is. They can't minister God to people. They're not ministers of the truth of God because they haven't got the gifting. They can set themselves up in a ministry in church, but they haven't got the gifting of God. And you can't fake that. They can have religious talk. And how many of you have ever had to, had to get women to talk? Since when do women ever have to be encouraged to talk? Well, so all they have to do is adopt Bible talk instead of secular talk and suddenly they think they're a minister of God. This, I saw Heidi Baker on some interview trying to say that, you know, how God did it and how she can't do this and God has to do this. She's a typical ungraced, godless, heathen church person who has never actually experienced God himself because there's no fear of God whatsoever before her eyes as the scripture speaks about who is, has picked up the lingo from everybody around her and is now using the talk of those who've got the things of God. There is no such thing as a woman in authority ministry in God's body. It's, there was none right the way through the old covenant. And if we came, when we came to the new covenant era, uh, if Jesus wished to make a statement about women's equality and all the rest of it, there would have been some women apostles as well. I mean, God is not, not afraid of offending men or upsetting mankind, is he, in any way? You know, he brought in the new covenant that really upset the, the Jews and the old covenant, didn't it? The Lord God never put a women in authority ministry. In the New Testament, we are told to, that women should uh, marry, guide the house, bear the children and guide the house. We're told in the New Testament that a woman is to uh, defer to her husband. Wives, obey your husbands. And wives were to defer to her husband as if he were the Lord himself. As if he were the Lord. The wild husbands, of course, to love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. This is a positional thing. She is not equal. Why? What is the root of all this? What is the root? And I've done a podcast on this on Radio Labrador as well, which is an audio if you want to listen to that instead. And I have started doing a series on this. What's the root of all this? Why? Well, the reason is quite simply back in Genesis 1 and 2. God created man as the crowning glory of his creation. And he made everything on earth subject to him. Then on the seventh day, there was a day of rest. Then after that, the Lord brought all the creatures before, the, before Adam and got him to name them. And whatever Adam called that creature, so it was. You know the story. Then after that, it was found there wasn't anyone for Adam. There was no partner for Adam. And Adam, the, Adam was put into a deep sleep, the first anaesthetic. And a rib was removed from his body and the flesh closed up instead. Wasn't it? Think about it. And from the rib he made the woman. The moment, woman is a derivative from the man. She is made for the man to be a wife, a mother, a helper for her husband. That is the function of a woman. She is made to be her husband's helper and made to bear, uh, to conceive, bear and feed his children. Isn't it? 
You know that. There is the root. The reason why God never puts women in authority over men is simply because women are made to be the helpers and the servants of the men. You can see that in the law of God a little bit later on. Jesus said not one jot or tittle would pass in the law until all things were fulfilled. That's what Jesus said. Now we're not under the law in the old fashioned way. We have the law written on our heart and we do it by nature. That's, it's the other way around now. However, the law it hasn't gone anywhere. And in the law and under the law, you will see quite simply that the Lord God uh, made woman for the man. You will see right the way through the law, the law that the woman remains under the authority of her father until she passes in marriage to being under the authority of her husband. She is never a standalone self-sufficient authority. And the reason is the creation. The creation that you see Okay, the men put road through here, and this is a, a small country track going to a farm. But all around us is held together by God, all of it. It's all his creation, all of this. He made it, okay, fine, someone put a tree here, and someone, you know, seeds got blown there, and the plants grew there, and the grass grew there, and all the rest of it. But our Lord sustains all this here. All of it. So, the woman was made out of man for the man after the initial creation. She was not made from the ground. Notice, when God formed man's body from the ground, into the ground, he did not make a woman body from, uh, from the ground at the same time and breathe life into them, he made a man. Later on, he derived from the man a woman. And Adam said that the woman was going to be called woman, Isha, because he was taken out of Ish, the man. They are the Hebrew words. So the woman was made to be the servant, okay. Now, unfortunately, Satan twisted this all around. Satan, seeing the weaker vessel and the more easily deceived woman, deceived, uh, the, deceived the woman easily, and the woman went to the man, and the man deferred to the weaker vessel, and if he turned around and, and given her a telling off and told her where to get off, there wouldn't have been a problem. But the Adam, man committed high, high treason. Yeah, okay, okay, he was the woman deceived, and the woman was deceived. But Adam knew darn well that this was serious evil. And he still went ahead and did it. And as a result, the whole, he changed sides and joined Satan, and became Satan's man, and not God's man anymore. However, there is the root of all this. And the root is very simply, a woman is made to be a servant of a man. The wife. To obey her husband. To defer to her husband. Before that, to obey her father. And defer to her father. Women are never under... Uh, uh, sorry, men are never under women's authority in the scripture. So... You know that those scriptures exist, and, I've, uh, and of course you, you're familiar enough and you know, but if you tell these wicked women like Patricia King or Joyce Mayer or the various other lying bitches the, uh, about these things, they immediately start ducking and diving and dodging and weaving like a boxer not to listen. Oh, then what about Deborah then? Well, come on, Deborah burnt, uh, burnt Barak's ears for trying to get... Uh, to trying to, uh, uh, submit to her. There's nothing wrong with women being in, prophesying. If she covers her head, she can pray or prophesy amongst the Lord's people, no problem. But the consciousness of God is gone completely. None of them have the grace of God, do they? And the bitchcraft that you see going on everywhere is absolutely evil. Absolutely evil. But there's the root. Woman was made for the man. 